I'm with uh, Olamide, Ojo. Mide, Ojo. Yeah. Um, Mide, you've just started your own uh, practice. Yeah. Um, but I want to go further back than that. What's, what's your backstory? Um, yeah, so um, I mean, um, I'm from the Midlands originally. I trained up in the Northeast. And then I moved down to London. You brought up in the Midlands? I was, yeah, in Lincolnshire. Really? So, yeah, really quite part of the world. Farmer land. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's how I grew up. So, I was the first black person in my school. So, it was, really? it was a real mix. Yeah. How was that? It was interesting. Yeah. Um, character building. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, it was a nice, safe environment. Were you born there? No, I was born in Nigeria. Oh, so um, how old were you when you came? Six years old. So, was I? Oh, yeah, six. yeah. Oh, so, six. my dad's a doctor and, you know, moved around with work and we settled in the Midlands. And, yeah. Yeah, I've been there ever since. How many brothers and sisters? Two younger sisters. Um, one's local, she's a doctor, and then my baby sister's in America, in Florida. And she's a doctor too? Yeah, no, she is in education. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one of us broke the mold kind of thing. All right. Yeah. So then, okay, what happened after that? Then, um, so yeah, um, after the Midlands, moved up to the northeast, Newcastle. Um, right. So that's where I did Your my undergrad. Moved. No, 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 so with the university. Oh, did you just university then? Yeah, so All I was right. there for five, six years, picked up the accent. Yeah. So half Geordie now. Fun town, you got. It's a fun town, yeah, yeah. and and actually a great teaching um, university as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, it kind of it was everything I needed. It allowed me to grow up away from mum and dad, but also like on a dentistry level, you know, I got a good grounding in, sure. in, in dentistry. And then when did you move to London? So um, I did a, a year house job in back home with mum and dad in Lincolnshire, and then after that, oral I moved surgery. Down, yeah, oral surgery, just because I knew it was my weakness. Um, in dental school, I didn't have enough exposure, yeah. so I did that for a year. Then afterwards, I moved down to London, and the plan was to stay in London for a year, and then move back to Link uh, to um, Newcastle. Yeah. Um, but no, um, yeah, stayed in London. And which year was that? That was two thousand and seven that I moved down, and um, yeah, so. All right, and so then, tell me about the jobs you did. So I did um, a general practice um, NHS job yeah. and started off, and but I realised there was a lot of the patients in the south seemed to want more. Um, cosmetic dentistry and more yeah. advanced dentistry yeah. and it just meant that I was able to push the boat and just like my, my exposure to things was growing so that's why I ended up staying in the practice and I really enjoyed it I did a few um, sort of advanced courses I did crystals did um, you? yeah aesthetic um, yeah. year-long course brilliant and course. that just put everything together brilliant, and, brilliant. you know he teaches you a recipe and you just follow it through and as part of that you know I find with his um, it's it's the, the the breadth and depth yeah in the same course, yeah. which is rare. Some yeah. courses dive deep in, in, a, in a small area. Yeah. Some courses are very, you know, yeah. broad but shallow. That's very but true. Somehow yeah. he manages to yeah. connect those dots yeah. together. And he, he does and, it. And he, good on him, isn't it? That, yeah. that, that's why it's full the whole time. That's yeah, it. absolutely. And I mean, it's in a way that makes you understand. It's also a recipe. You follow it through because some people won't have that kind of dentistry in their practice. So what Chris does is he teaches you the basics. Yeah. He teaches you how to go to the next step. I mean, teach you how your patients think. So, you know, part of it was, okay, look, this is health, this is cosmetic dentistry, yeah. and this is how you do it. So one of the things was, you know, he taught a lot about tooth whitening and explained why it was important, yeah. and then you kind of flow from there. Yeah. And then, obviously, composite work, to veneer work, all of that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So then then you went to 10 Dental at some point. When was yeah, that? so basically on the back of Chris's um, course, yeah. um, I joined the BACD okay. and then I got to sort of do a bit of networking and meeting people. Yeah. And um, on the very first BACD meeting, I met um, Martin, um, the principal at 10 Dental. One day, yeah. yeah, and you know what? He just, I call him my mentor because he just, Took, you know, took me to one side and said, oh, look, I can help you talk through cases. There was nothing else to it. And, you know, I was, for about a year, I showed him work that I'd been doing as yeah. a result of Chris's work. He gave me some tips. And then a year later, a, a position was available. He said, come for an interview. And I think, as I said, it's all part of the same training. But, you know, that's how I landed the job there. So, um, yeah. And have you learned implants as well? Yes. Yeah, so very recently, um, I've, I've done a year-long course in the UK. But then I've also done, and um, it was um, Corey Farron, oh, um, really? uh, Fazila and, and Zaki, yep. Okay. Um, so the London LCID course, um, again, brilliant course. And something abroad as well? And then, yeah, just very recently, um, I found that I'd got good sort of exposure into the implants, yeah. but I just wanted to place a few more. Yeah. So um, recently, NeoDent um, oh, yeah. um, uh, launched a course in Brazil. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was able to place seven implants in four or five days. So that was quite cool. And um, I just feel ready now. Um, By the way, have you ever worked in Nigeria? Probably? Never, never. It's something I I, cons I would love to do, yeah. and certainly when I'm at a level, I'd love to give back as well. But um, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah definitely. 
Well, I, I mean, Nigeria's got both ends of the spectrum, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I heard there's some high-end dentistry going on there too. High-end and, yeah, and, and no dentistry. <laughs> no middle. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> so it's, the, it's a catch-22. In fact, I have quite a few friends that fly in to get their teeth done with me, you know. They, they, oh, really? they wouldn't see somebody out there. Oh, really? They'll just save it up and then, you know, once oh, really? a year, yeah. Okay. And I think it's, it's, that's the problem. I think people, they respect sort of foreign dentistry sure. or foreign healthcare. Sure. Yeah, it's like, so tell me about the moment when you decided that you're going to open your own practice. Yeah, I mean, again, I've, I've been doing it for quite a long time now and I just realised that at some point, you know, I can't just keep working forever just for myself. I thought, well, this is an opportunity for me to sort of have something that's a, a legacy and yeah. something that I can sort of put my own slant on. So I was walking past um, a building at the end of my road where I live and it had planning permission for it to, to convert D1. it. Yeah, D1. And it already had plans drawn up by another dentist. All right. And it, it all fell through. Right. And I thought, you know, when you have the, those moments in life, you think, I'm going to walk past this and somebody's going to turn it into a business. Yeah. I thought, well, why don't I give it a shot? So basically on the back of that, I said, I, I was the first person to view it. I put an offer in. They accepted it. And yeah, the rest, as they say. And where is, Twickenham? Yeah, so it's Twickenham. Um, Twickenham Green. Uh -huh. So it's a nice sort of leafy area and very sort of suburban, lots of commuters. But it's also on a high street location. So we get a lot of footfall as well. So exact, how long exactly did you start? Um, so I've only opened seven months now. So it's seven months next week. What would you have done differently? Um, okay, definitely, definitely planning who I was working with from a building contractor point of view. That's whoever you were working it's with. Just, that, yeah, go on. That, was, that, was the, that was the single um, thing that I didn't get right. I was, I was rushing to get it started, so I am enlisted somebody's help yeah. but then unfortunately I should have taken a bit more time yeah. and got certain guarantees in place that things would fall, would work out with from the business side of things um, other than that I think I'm, I'm quite proud to say that most of it's gone according to plan you're happy with that I'm, I'm really happy I mean it's hard work and uh, so a squat's got its own issues right yeah I mean the, the marketing side yeah I mean I think I'm lucky because yeah. I've lived in the area so I hope I've been able to sort of start a bit of traction from that yeah but yeah marketing is key if you haven't got people to sort of help you get people in through the door, then you're going to struggle. And obviously, as you probably know, cash flow um, is is a major issue. I do know. Yeah. Tell me about recruitment. Um, yeah, recruitment again. I've learned. That, do you think you're good at that? Um, no, not on my own. No, in a, in a word, because I think you go for people that you like, but actually that's not all you need. You need people that aren't necessarily just like you. You need a, a mix of people. And um, so I've been able to. I'm getting better at delegating, so I've got some team members that are now helping me. Um, I've tried agencies. How many people have you got now? Um, so there's about eight of us in the practice. Eight? Yeah. Eight already? Yeah, but we're all part-time. Okay. So, you know, we've got two or three um, dentists that work on an associate basis. We've got an endodontist that comes in. We've got two reception staff and two different nurses as well. And the main difference between being an associate and being a principal? Um, it's Other hard. than the obvious, but you go on. The main difference is um, you're... Yeah, you have to think more than just the clinical, which is obvious. Yeah. But um, um, there's a sense of ownership, so you want you want the service that you, you deliver to be even better. So they're the two biggest differences and the biggest challenges. Yeah. The, uh, the staff issues you don't find that. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, it doesn't switch off when the patient walks out the door. That's the problem. So yeah. you've got other things going on. But I mean, it's early days yet. So, so far, I've still got the energy. Uh, have, you, have you fired anyone yet? I've asked someone to leave. <laughs> I wasn't polite enough to fire. I wasn't sort of firm enough to fire them, but I asked them to leave. Yeah, and um, to what, what kind of what kind of uh, boss do you think you are? Um, I'd like are to. You, are you an authoritarian type? Or no, um, too I think soft. too soft. <laughs> yeah, definitely too soft at the beginning. Me too, um, me too. I try to get people on board, and I want because I'm growing something. I need people that sort of buy in, in. buy into it. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to sort of. I'm trying to build a team. Yeah. I'm trying to say, look, it's not my business; it's our business. So I'd much rather, I'm, I'm happy to accept being soft right now. There'll come a time where I have to be a bit firmer, but I think it's the, it's the right way to do it. If you're listening, if you work for uh, Refresh then things are about to get much harder. Yeah, so, <laughs> so tell me about the name Refresh um, Yeah, so again, I, I spent months looking at names. It was going to be something smile, just this and smile that. Yeah. And then I said I wanted something to be new something to be a change and I was thinking evolve or something something Evolution. new yeah and then I thought I want it to be a fresh experience I want it to be new and I thought yeah. okay um, make a refreshing change yeah and that's kind of what the, the, the motto is for the business we want so to if be you had to if you had to pin down what's different about refresh dental um, I would say that it's not what's different it's what I've learned from lots of different people so it's an amalgamation what's at its core then um, customer service and mm -hmm. go and I, it sounds very cheesy but I'll, I my aim is to go the extra mile for my patients. So 
It's a service. I appreciate Give me an that. Example of that. So, I mean, you know, if a patient, it's a basic thing. So, we do lots of obviously um, after after care calls if there's a problem. Yeah, but it's not just it's not forced. It's genuine. Yeah. So, I've got a patient. You know, it might be two or three weeks after we've fitted some restorations. I'll call them just see how they're doing. Um, you know, and again, it's the attention to detail, remembering the little details about themselves, their holidays, all yeah. of those things. And I mean, we're still a work in progress. But again, one of the big things when we get referrals from other patients, we do like to send a little thank you gift yeah. and again it's just going that extra little bit further than maybe we have to yeah. but hopefully it'll, it'll um, generate a positive feeling with our patients and a long term patient base yeah that's the hope yeah yeah so what, what, what's the best thing you did I mean I asked the biggest mistake um, what was the best thing you did Where someone else is thinking of starting a practice oh yeah the best th- th- the best thing I did was I I made it look the way I wanted it to look. Aesthetically. Aesthetically. I went. Go on. I went. Have you been there yet? No, no. In terms of, sort of yeah, yeah, please do. In terms of um, equipment and things, we bought. You know, I, I spent slightly more than I budgeted for. Yeah. But I'm glad I did it because I think quality stands out. If you've got something that looks good, people. The first thing people come. But do you mean? Do you mean equipment or do you mean architecture? And I mean the equipment. I mean the way that it looks. So we've got you know high tech equipment in terms of chairs, in terms of TV screens, yeah. in terms of visuality. It look, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. It looks like somewhere I would want to go. And I think that's the biggest message. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure you've got it right. I'm going to come and see you. <laughs> I'm scheduled to be yeah. here in two weeks or Yeah, something. please, yeah. But, but when I, I visited a lot of practices. Yeah. Right? I must have been to a thousand practices yeah. by now. Yeah. yeah. One thing I find difficult about practices is the attention in the surgery compared to the attention in the waiting room. Interesting, yeah. And, and even though I'm a dentist, yeah. um, I make my mind up about the dentist at the place in the waiting room. Right. Even, I'm a dent, I know yeah. all about, I know everything. Yeah. Right? But but the waiting rooms are neglected, I find, right. compared to the surgeries. Yeah. In spending terms. Now, of yeah. course, you think that, right? Yes. Like the dental chair is going to cost more yeah, of than course. the coffee yeah. machine. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, But the coffee machine does need to be there, the person yeah. does need to smile, does need to offer me the coffee, yeah. and so on and so forth. You know that? No, no. That, that's something I find out, I'm sure you've taken care of. This I, side. I, I think that is something we, um, again, you know, we, we looked at our demographic, it's a family area. So, yeah. you know, we've, not only have we made a, a nice reception area, we've also got a child-friendly area with little toys and little... Yeah. So it fits in and people, so far, you know, have been pleasantly surprised. And it doesn't look like a dental reception. What does it look like? It looks like someone's your, house. Yeah, your front room or... Uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's, a, you know, it's an executive lounge because I don't want that feel. Yeah. It's comfortable. You know, you can sit down, you can have a drink, you can read lots of magazines. And, nice. and again, it's not in-your-face marketing. You know, we've kept it kind of neutral. And, and um, people are okay. Happy. Tell me about that. Look, we, yeah. we go to a lot of hassle taking pictures of these pretty women yeah. and all that and making the stuff. Well, we've got that us. poster up in our. Well, in our this is the question yeah. I was going to ask you. I mean, the putting up of posters yeah. and magazines yeah. and the influence that has on. Yeah. I mean, when, when we design this stuff, yeah. the, way, the way we think of it is yeah, it's got to sell product. Yeah. But the, the number one way we think of it is you've got to want to put it up yeah. in your. Yeah. In your place. So give me some, give me some feedback. Well, I can. On, I can, that I can process. I, I'm not talking about. No, no, no. I, I, on I, that process. No, I can be honest with you. I mean, again, we we, we get lots of things through, lots of leaflets that yeah. we, we should put, and we can only sort of align ourselves with brands that or things that fit our kind of criteria. Yeah. And we wanted things that were clean, and we wanted things that were aspirational, and that people want to look like. It goes with the whole. Yeah, but without that. being sort of too too in your face. So we took a long time, and there are probably only about two or three things that we sort of have on display because. We also don't want too much information. Yeah. So we've got, you know, certainly um, Enlighten and Invisalign. They're the two brands that we've kind of aligned ourselves with. So much so that actually... I see that in a lot of places. Yeah. Like, uh, I see that in a lot of places. Yeah. It hopefully will give the same credence that we yeah. feel that our, our practice deserves. And which implants do you use? Um, so at the moment I'm using Neodent. Oh, hi, um, I yeah, I, I find that the customer service has been excellent. Um, I also work with Megagen. Um, but I've only just started, so uh, long term we'll probably be using the two. But Neodent's my 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 current go-to. Do you think you buy product more based on product or on the people selling the product? Hundred percent customer service. Um, I mean, obviously you've got to do your research, but you'd imagine that most um, equipment or most materials are of a similar ilk. There are some that are slightly better. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it really comes down to I think customer service and also yeah. I mean, I want I want people to go the extra mile for me. That's, okay. what, that's what I'm looking for. All right. Yeah. What would you say is your five-year plan? Are you, are you going to put refresh dentals all around, please? Um, I, I want. Are you are you that way inclined? I wouldn't say no. Yeah. But I think my first. Because you've got some ten dentals. Yeah. And they're and doing they, that. They're doing that. I think they're doing ten. I. They might do. I think probably. <laughs> yeah, they, they might do. But I think for me, 
I need to keep it simple. So I think, like you said, five year, maybe two year, a three year plan. If this is a standalone, we'll improve the concept once definitely. Yeah. and right. then and then yeah, I would love to. I would love to. But I think my my aspiration is, I also am not greedy. I, if one's enough, and it depends what's enough. Um, I've got a beautiful family. I'm very blessed with my kids as well. You live there as well? I live there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I want to have... Do you walk to work? A three-minute walk. I walk to work. Yeah. For now. This is a way about to do it. Move it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does look really different. I find sometimes I don't go home. I just wait. Yeah, and that's the problem. Of, no, no, because it's too short. Yeah. It's, I haven't got a, like, a time commute. Yeah, yeah. Like. and you do more stuff. That's it. <laughs> you don't have time to go on the phone or send emails because yeah. you're, you're home in two yeah. minutes. Yeah. I know I get that as well. But I, what I reckon, I'm not, I'm not an owner of dental practice, yeah. but what I suspect is, you know, the move from associate yeah. to principal yeah. to multiple practices, yeah. those those moves are, yeah. are of similar differences, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's all dentistry. Yeah. As an associate, you're just carrying out dentistry. Yeah. As a principal, you've got all the yeah. other business stuff yeah. around it. As a multiple practice thing, you've got the systems you've got to put in place yeah. to make all of that work yeah, together. Connect, yeah. And it's a different skill for yeah. each one. No, very and Not much everyone's so. made for it. No. You know? That's that's the thing. Yeah. And, and you're quite right to say, when you're happy, you're happy. Yeah. That, that's the key thing. Yeah. Being yeah. Happy. yeah. Yeah. Exit plan. <laughs> How can someone connect to you? What's the what's the practice's website? Um. So it's um www.refresh-dental.com.co.uk. Sorry. Okay. So refresh um, hyphen dental dot co dot uk, um, and we're on social media, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. How about someone to connect to you personally? Um, again, I've got Where's sort the of best place. Um, yeah, so certainly um, contacting me by email, um, either um, on my through the website, either through the website on the practice, or um, I've got um, a, a small web page about myself as well. So if you Google Midi Ojo Dentist, there's not that many Midi Ojos. I've tested it. Midi Ojo. Dentist. Yeah. So there's, there's not that many. Lovely, lovely. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.